We're going to move on to new tools and next steps. And uh, with this uh, is uh, Dr. Andrew Stewardson and Kate Ryan. Andrew Stewardson is an ID physician who's just come back from working with Didier Pitte in Geneva for the last uh, three and a half, four years, and is just finishing off his PhD, or just finished his PhD, um, as uh, the manager of Hand Hygiene Australia. And Kate Ryan, who's a physiotherapist, many of you all know, has been with Hand Hygiene for many years. Uh, so the two of them are going to present about new tools and next steps. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Lindsay. So um, <coughs> it's nice to see you all here. Um, so this is a pretty practical presentation, just about a couple of new tools that we've developed at Hand Hygiene Australia, which hopefully will be you'll find useful and will be released over the next uh, few weeks. Uh, so um, here we go. Yep. Um, so the aims for these two new tools, which I'll go into in a moment, were firstly to optimize the effectiveness of the data that you're collecting uh, of the, and of the program and to improve patient outcomes. And it's pretty clearly the main aim of the whole program uh, to increase efficiency, uh, so by saving time, we hope, and to aim towards sustainability over the coming years. So the two tools we're gonna briefly talk about, uh, firstly, I'll go into a new reporting tool that's associated with HICAP, and then Kate will talk about the new learning management system uh, for the Hand Hygiene Australia modules. Uh, so uh, the aim of this new tool, which uh, just part of the same web application, and perhaps could I ask who here um, uses um, HICAP, the Hand Hygiene Compliance um, web application? Do you mind if I ask you to put up your hand? Yep, okay. Um, terrific, so there's a few people here. Uh, so the aim of this new reporting tool then is to uh, maximize behavior change by um, being facilitating uh, targeted performance feedback to make the most of the data that you're collecting, and then also to reduce the time spent on reporting. Uh, and specifically, we wanted to increase the ability to create customized reports, and then also to display trends over time, because up until now, as you're aware, those of you who've been using um, the HICAP web application, it shows cross-sectional reports, but not changes trends over time. Uh, so it's probably best, without spending too much time on this, just to give one quite simple example. So if you wanted to present results for before touching a patient or moment one uh, for different professions during the national audits in 2015, this is the kind of thing that you would do. And it's probably best just to explore this yourself. It'll, the new tool will be released um, on Wednesday evening, so when you get back from the conference, it'll be ready for you to start using on Thursday. Um, so, but, so yeah, as I say, go into it with uh, some questions, some things you want to look at, uh, and um, I think that's going to be the best way to get you to, to, to know it, but just as a simple example, um, to show you what it looks like, here's um, the, the uh, standard existing reports, and then b below that uh, section, you'll see these new flexible uh, reports, uh, and it says, uh, so flexible reports updated daily. So you've got two options, there's snapshot reports for cross-sectional reports of hand hygiene data over a particular, during one particular time period, and then also um, trend reports, obviously, for changes over time. So you've got to make a decision at that point. And then the first step is to uh, set filters. So um, again, I'll try not to go into too much detail, but basically most of the time, I guess, we're interested in uh, national audit data, but you can also include here, um, if you want to look or divide the data up according to month and year, or include uh, local audit data as well, either by itself or in combination with national audit data. Uh, and then here we, we filter the data. So you don't have to select anything in these filters, but if you want to look at specific things, so the example I gave was we wanted to look at moment one. So I've clicked here on the moment one filter. Equally, you could click on moment one and moment two, or you could say I want specific healthcare worker types or specific ward types. Um, if you've got access to different departments or different uh, organizations, you can also select which one you want to look at, um, or you can just ignore that completely. Uh, and then the next step is to set stratification, and I said in the, this example we wanted to look at moment one for different healthcare worker types, so I've checked the box here for healthcare worker group. Again, you could also, if you want to display by moment or um, by organizational structure, um, by department type, by glove use, all this. So basically any kind of data that we collect, um, you can stratify by that. And then click on this generate report button and it takes you to a table. Uh, so here you've got um, details about the filters 
uh, that you've chosen, just to remind yourself if you've, um, uh, about what's, what's being shown here in this uh, report. Uh, you can um, click on the um, headings of the table to reorder the table if you want to order it by the number of moments or by compliance if you want to emphasize uh, who's got the highest compliance. And then what you can do is um, use these checkboxes on the side here to um, pick which of these lines you want to go into your graph. So if you think, well, these um, uh, healthcare worker professions here that only have a couple of moments collected, it's not very useful to put that into a graph. Um, then you can just check, check, for example, we want medical practitioners, allied healthcare workers, uh, nurses and midwives, and personal care staff. Uh, and that will, is what will appear in your graph uh, when you click down here, generate graph, uh, and we go on to the next uh, screen with, um, with the graph, uh, which you can then export as well. So, yeah, as I said, just a very brief introduction to, to make you aware that this is going to be there from Thursday when you get back from the conference and feeling inspired about uh, getting back into your program. Uh, and um, let us know if you've got any questions or comments about it. It's, it's going to be still developing, I imagine, over the coming months. So if you're finding it's useful, but possibly some other features that would be make it even better, please don't um, hesitate to send us an email um, to give some feedback. And there's a, a cheat sheet which will be available on the website just to take you through the main components um, of the reporting tool as well. So that's all I really wanted to cover, just to let you know that it's there. And I'll hand over to Kate to talk about the new learning management system. So I'm going to talk about why a new learning management system, the changes for users, and changes to reporting for everyone, and hopefully some, some further development to come still. Now, I do have a nice little picture on that slide, but apparently it doesn't appear on my screen. Think of it as being a VW bug car in that blank space over to the side. And that's what our hand hygiene Australia learning practices are like currently. They're serviceable, they get us from A to B, but that's about where they end. Oh, there it is. There we go. They're serviceable, they get us there. Okay, it sounds like from, the, from Jen's talk, most people are using them and they like using them and they find them effective for their education. But from all reports from people who contact us regularly, this is probably what our users think of our system. It's a little bit broken and it needs some fixing. It could be better. Um, and especially regarding certificates and generation of certificates, we get a lot of emails regularly about generating certificates and having trouble and losing them and not being able to get them back again. So why do we want a new LMS? Essentially, we want to improve the reporting function, make it easier for everyone to, to get the reports of who's completed the packages. We want to improve that learner experience, um, being able to save and return. So if you complete the package or you get partway through and you get interrupted, you have to run off and do something with patients, you can save it and return to it later. Um, we also want to improve the access to historical records, being able to go back into the system and see what you've completed, when you've completed it, and be able to get your certificate at any point, at any time, whenever you want it. Um, we also want to make it a more modern interface, um, having e the ability to have email reminders to remind you to complete the package, especially for those auditors, given Jen's presented, but not everyone's completed that auditor validation every year. We want to have reminders to make sure people are doing that, and some added functionality. So what are the changes for users? The main things are there's a self-registration, so you have to actually register to do the packages now, and then that will generate a login for you. So you'll be able to log in any time to access the system, and you'll be able to access your certificate history. So if you do log in, the login screen will look like this. Um, for new users, we go down the bottom, and there we go. Click for the new users down the bottom to register. There's the self-registration, and the self-registration is essentially a, a process of defining where you are and where you want to put yourself in the system. So at the moment, if you complete the packages, it takes some time to find your hospital on the list at, by the time you get to the end of the package, especially if you're using an iPad, you have to scroll for a long time to actually find it. So let's tighten up that by asking some questions at the start. I think we turn into a bit of Yui. If we ask the right questions, we get to the right thing. So we keep going, we find the region that you're in, and then we find your hospital and you type your name in and there you go, you can register yourself to your hospital. Then we get to the actual self-registration page where you fill in your details and we're asking a lot more questions now than we did previously. So we're asking for employee numbers, we're asking um, for names, emails, professional groups, so a lot more information, um, 
securely so that we can then have the ability to report back to HR systems more easily for you. So then when you do get a login, you've completed the login process, you'll get a login emailed to you, so your username and password will be emailed from the system to you, so you can access that at any time. Unfortunately, there's some different screens depending on what kind of hospital system you have and how good your internet is. If you're using Internet Explorer 8 or below, then you'll get a screen that doesn't look quite so fancy and nice and new, but it's serviceable. When you first log in, it'll have packages that you've registered for immediately on a screen and you can complete them from that screen. If you have the luxury of having a nicer Internet Explorer browser, i.e. 10 or above, or Firefox or Chrome, then it does look a little bit more modern. Okay, this is your home screen, it'll have a calendar, so if you have any notifications of needing to complete packages that will appear on the calendar, your packages that you've already signed up for will be there ready to roll. That's your home screen. So then if you go to the Achievements tab, you can get your certificates at any time and you can see how many packages are completed. They'll all be sitting there ready. If you want to sign up for any more packages, once you've registered, if you want to do some different packages, there's a catalogue and you can browse through the catalogue and pick the appropriate packages for you there. And so we've broken um, packages down into hand hygiene modules, into infection control modules. So there's a basic infection control module from the um, Commission that's hosted on a website and potentially in the future we'll have some more infection control modules from the Commission hosted there too. And there's also the hand hygiene auditor modules, so we've separated them out to make it easier to find what you want to use. Then the changes for reporting from a hospital perspective is that multiple users can be given a staff role. So in our current system, only one person can give them a login and everyone has to share that, so you have to make sure no one changes the password on you. So from now on, the new system will allow as many people as you want to be able to run those reports, whether it's someone from infection control and someone from quality and someone from somewhere else. Multiple people can have the role. The reporting can be completed for multiple levels within a state as well. So if you're in a health service that has multiple levels, then you can run that report at whatever level you would like. And then there are lots more options for reporting also. So the most you can report by the most recent course for all users. You can report for a specific course. So if you're looking for annual audit validation course names only, then you can search just for that course. Um, you can search for all courses, all learners, because some learners complete multiple courses. Some of them like doing those packages and they get in there and complete every one of them. So you can run a report that shows all the courses completed for your facility. Or you can customise your reports and pick and choose the information you want to show in a report. The reporting home screen is what a staff role comes up with. So if you're logged in and have the ability to run your reports, then you go straight to a page that has your reports on there, so it's easy to find and easy to use. When you're using the completion ports, you have the ability to download the completion results and send it to your own HR system. Okay, so you can always download the information. Because of that added information that people have to register with, you'll hopefully be able to feed it back into your HR system more easily. And in the future, there is potential for a single sign-in through your own learning management system, because um, it's a bit clunky at the moment how it works. Or there's a ability, the ability to either upload your employee list into the LMS, and so you can um, register the role in there, or the ability to use our LMS as your own hospital learning management system. So if you don't have a, a good learning management system for your facility, this one can be um, upgraded and utilised for your own hospital also. So we will be doing a transition from the old to the new. I'd love to be able to say, like Andrew's reporting tool, that it's going to be available on Thursday, but unfortunately not. It's still a little ways away. Um, once we do transfer to the new system, all administrator accounts are going to be transferred over. So if you currently have a HICAP login or you currently have an online learning package login, then they will be transferred to the new system. And the usernames will be emailed to you once the system goes live. Unfortunately, the user historical records won't be able to be transferred because that was all a little bit too hard with our new grouping. Um, but certainly all the, the staff roles will be able to be transferred. And we will have a, a redirection on our website for showing people where to get to. So it will be essentially going to the same spot on our website to get to the packages, but it will re redirect them to a self-registration package. We do have some future developments. We haven't even set up this one yet, but we're still planning ahead. Um, and so planning ahead for next year, there will be a call for a working party for reviewing the content of the existing packages. We appreciate they were set up probably way back when we started Hand Hygiene Australia and they do need some review and some development. So we'll be putting a call out for anyone interested in helping us with that next year. And we'll also be, um, I've been promising this a long time, but it will be there next year, um, a renal dialysis package and we'll also be doing a dental online learning package for next year also. 
And then we'll also in the future be looking towards what we can do with our auditor training. So currently a lot of our auditor training is face-to-face -face workshops and we're looking at whether we can streamline any more of that within this system and creating more packages within the system. And if we can't do the training itself um, within the system, we'll at least be streamlining how we register our auditors so that it can go through this system with the automatic reminders uh, about completion rather than through a different system on our website. And look out for messages from us in the coming weeks. We hope that it will be um, have a go live date before the end of the year so we can get it out there. There may be a few teething errors to start with, but we just want to get it out there and let everyone start using it before the new year when all the new students start and all the new people start at your facility. Uh, we do have a new email address um, just purely for the learning management system also, which is hhalearning at austin.org.au. So if you have any questions about this package, please use that email address. And thank you. Any burning questions? Just one or two. Obviously, you can see there are a lot of Sunday morning. If you're like me, I know that computers run on electricity, but that's about it. Um, that all these fancy new things don't panic. There'll be, you know, webinars and teaching things to ease you into this. But if you're in an institution where you're not going electronic, you haven't got iPads, and you're not thinking about this, then all the issues about the time and effort and all this, you're not going to benefit from these things, which can really help you. And uh, so the point is not to persecute you, it's to help you. And, uh, you know, I think that you, it's a, a good thing to be supposed to be doing. Okay. All right, one question here. Okay, um, is that on? Yes, it is. I think a lot of us have an issue with um, staff who don't speak English as a first language, um, computer literacy, literacy full stop. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, what the plans are with you know, future developments in capturing information around staff that you may train differently? At the moment, I think they'll be kept at a local level. Unfortunately, we need to, at a national level, we need to start relying on more and more kids know how to use computers from a very early age. And my daughter, when she was about two, could swipe through the iPad quite easily. So I think more and more people coming through your hospital will be more computer literate. But for those who aren't, unfortunately can't, accommodate at this point, but potentially within the system we might be able to do some sort of reporting tick a box to say yeah. that they're... I, I, that they're I wonder if there might be some value in um, having even reporting in or capturing information because we still have unfortunately a reasonably large number of staff who, who don't have the skills and I, I'm not sure they will into the future. Totally, I totally agree with you. I think the, the point that we've found with some of our surveys is the ones that have difficulty with English also have difficulty with computers of any sort. And so they're going to need a sort of a different form of handling anyway. Um, so, yeah. Is there one last guess over here and then we'll move on? Just here. Hi. I was just wondering, is it something that can be set up in aged care or is it purely just for hospital based? No, it's the online learning packages can be used for anywhere. They do have a hospital acute focus, um, but they certainly can be used for aged care education. A lot of facilities do use that currently. Absolutely. With the reporting system? And yeah, reporting and everything, yep. So at any organisation anywhere, we have a lot of educational facilities using them, um, aged care, hospitals, community health, yep. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks.